Hello everyone, today we'll be tweaking your OBS settings so that your audio is punchier, crispier, and cleaner for your streams. The goal is to have less noise in your audio while maintaining a uniform signal so your voice is heard with the same perceived loudness regardless if you're talking soft or loud. There is no additional purchase necessary for this because everything is built in to OBS. The only thing you'll need is your microphone and the necessary audio equipment for your setup such as your mixer or your audio interface. I'll be going over what filters you'll need and go over what each filter does so you can get an understanding of what it is you're trying to tweak. Please note that if you're using an audio interface or a mixer to make sure that the audio isn't clipping on the device itself. And if you're using a headset mic, make sure that the microphone boost is set to plus zero dB in the recording properties under sound settings. It is also important to note that your audio quality after setting up these filters will be entirely dependent on the capabilities of your own hardware. This video isn't a video on how to make a $10 mic sound like a $100 mic or a $1,000 mic. It'll exacerbate the fact that it's a $10 mic. So please keep that in mind. So we will start off by opening OBS. If you haven't added an audio source already, do so and choose which audio device you are going to use for your microphone. Once that's done, click on filters and it should bring up this menu. So the first thing we're going to add is noise suppression. What this does is reduce any background noise such as AC hums, fans, and vents. And the current version of, of OBS allows for two options, RNN noise and speaks or specs. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, RNN noise uses algorithms and AI to suppress the noise. Note that this option requires CPU power to maintain. This does a pretty good job at canceling noise, but if you find that you are losing noticeable audio quality, then it's better to switch to Speaks. Speaks is the more traditional suppression filter that does not use AI. This is the noise suppression that was available in the previous versions of OBS. For this, I find that leaving it at default is sufficient, but if you find that you're losing audio quality, you can always lower this slider to negative 40 dB, which I prefer to have it at. Or if you want further um, suppression, you can always increase it. So the next filter we want to add is the noise gate. What this does is reduce a sound signal if it's below a certain threshold. You want to set your threshold so that your keyboard noise, mouse clicks, and other noises are below the threshold. You also want to set it so that your lowest speaking voice is above the threshold. This is to avoid your voice being cut off while you're speaking. So once you get your noise gate configured and fine tuned, the next thing we're going to do is add a pre-limiter. The goal for this filter is to squash the audio signal coming in to prevent it from clipping. Uh, don't worry, we'll increase this signal later down the chain. So in OBS, there's no actual filter called pre-limiter. We're just going to use the limiter filter for this. Now there are two parameters that we should be able to change. There's the sh threshold and the release. Since we want to squash the audio, we need to set this limit to negative 12 dB. You're more than welcome to have it more if you'd like, but I find that having 12 dB is sufficient. And this means that any signal above this threshold will be squashed down to 12 dB. Now for the release, we can set it as quickly as possible so it can squash it down faster. So now that we've set up our pre-limiter, we can now get into our compressor. 
So we'll add that filter next. What this will do is increase the audio signal. The reason why we want to squash the signal in the previous filter is so that we can uniformly increase the signal in this part of the signal chain. This will allow our voice to be kept at the same level regardless of how soft or loud we talk. Here we have five parameters that we can change. The ratio, the threshold, the attack, release, and output gain. For the ratio, we need to lower the ratio so that the signal is not reduced by much. So, I, so I'm going to reduce it to a ratio of 3, 3 to 1. This means that for every 3 dB, the input signal is above the threshold. The output signal is reduced to 1 dB over the threshold. Now for the threshold, I set it pretty low so that the entire signal gets compressed. We just have to make sure that our voice is safely above this threshold. So I would set it to about 20... Negative 25 decibels, negative 24 around there. This means that any signal above the 25 dB threshold will be compressed by a ratio of three to one. Now for the attack, uh, the attack is how fast we want the compression to take place. It's like the compressor's reaction time. Uh, you can leave this as is, but I do not recommend setting it higher because it'll cause the delay of when the compression takes place and since i want my compressor to uh, react quickly i want to set this really low i'll set it to one milliseconds now the release has the inverse effect of attack it is how long we want the signal to be compressed after it's fallen below the threshold you can leave it as is, but I like to have a faster uh, release time. So I'm going to set this to 15 milliseconds. So now for the output gain, uh, this is where we will increase the signal that we've reduced in the pre limiter filter. Since we've reduced our audio signal to negative 12 dB, we can turn this parameter up until we get our volume meter to consistently hit between zero to negative six db so as i'm talking right now i am increasing the output gain and i think this is a good spot for it 13 db you should notice a noticeable volume increase and then again i shouldn't be clipping here but if we if we do clip then we need to set a limiter and this is just a safety net to avoid clipping at all so we want to add a another limiter filter in here now we can set the threshold for this filter higher than our pre-limiter negative negative 6 db is the default it's a good threshold for most people and that's what they would set it to but you can play around with it and see what you like I prefer to have my limiter set to negative 3 dB just because I want my voice to be always louder than all the sources in OBS. And for the release time, you can set this to default. I usually leave it at default, but you can play around with it and see what works for you. Now for the side chain slash ducking source, we can leave this to none since we are not going to be using it. And quite honestly, I don't know what it does. Okay, so we can use different mics for this, like I've said before. Um, this is what it sounds like if you were to use a headset mic. I didn't change uh, my settings that much, except um, using speaks. This headset is directly plugged into the 3.5 millimeter port on my gaming laptop. And since everyone has different specs, your audio quality will uh, vary. And factors such as headset quality and the sound card on your motherboard will have an effect on how your headset will sound. So that's all I have for now. But if you found this video to be helpful, I would appreciate it if you like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash gyri. 
I stream from Monday to Thursdays between 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you want to know the stuff that I use for my streams, I have Amazon affiliate links down below. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.